Hey guys, so today we're checking out the Barricade Trekker front bumper fitting all 2020 and newer JL Wranglers. So if you are in search of an affordable, heavy duty front bumper, this is gonna be a great choice to check out. This will have a sleek and low profile look to complement the front end of your JL while also offering some tough protection with a steel plate construction and an overrider hoop for your grill. Not to mention, this will offer all of the standard features that you would want out of a heavy duty front bumper while giving you a ton of room on the sides for better clearance. This bumper will also include recovery points on the front with supplied D-rings for anybody who likes that heavy duty rugged look or if you're taking your Jeep off road and need a recovery point for those just in case moments. Now this will also come with a drop in winch plate to help keep it out of the way of the grill for optimized cooling and also protecting the winch. And the winch plate will accept any winch with a 10 by 4 and a half inch bolt pattern and will tap out at a 12,000 pound pulling capacity. Now speaking of pulling capacity, the D-rings and the shackles on the bumper will be rated for up to 9,500 pounds. Now this will also include cutouts for your OEM fog lights so you won't have to outsource or upgrade to a new set if you don't want to. And this will come with two tabs on the top of the overrider feature uh, that you can attach accessory lighting to for better visibility at night. Now overall, this is just going to be a very solid bumper providing you with everything that you need to achieve a really good look and a ton of off-road function at a very affordable price point. Now speaking of price, this will come in at roughly $350, making it one of the more affordable bumpers on the page. Now other options on the page may just come with different features like LED lighting included in the kit or skid plates to add onto the bumper. Now, this will also be a more stubby or compact bumper as to where some other choices may be a full width design covering more of the front end than this. However, they're not going to offer you the clearance that this one does. Now, I think if you don't necessarily need every bell and whistle, you're looking for some solid recovery points, the option to mount up a winch, and you're looking for some solid protection and good clearance for the front end of your JL, this is going to be it. When it comes to install, this is going to be a pretty easy one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you about two hours to get the job done. And one of our installers here is actually gonna walk you through that process step by step. So that wraps it up for my review. Let's go ahead and get into the install. Tools used for this installation, 3 8 electric impact gun, cutting pliers, 13 millimeter wrench, 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench, seven millimeter wrench, seven millimeter socket, two millimeter Allen head, quarter inch to 3 8 adapter, 13, 15 millimeter sockets, 3 8 short extension, 3 8 ratchet, quarter inch drive ratchet, quarter inch drive extension, clip removal tool. Hey guys, we're gonna watch this uninstalled footage we have, and then we'll get right back on our installation. Our first step to taking off our front bumper is to take off the upper splash guard. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver to remove the eight pins that are holding it in. Once clips are removed, we can remove our upper splash shield. Next, we can head underneath the bumper and remove the lower splash shield. It's held in by a number of clips up at the front and then two eight millimeter bolts at the back here. I'm gonna use a trim removal tool and remove the clips at the front first. And then we can take out those bolts. So we actually only have one of the bolts holding on the back of the splash guard. So you would normally have two, but I'm gonna take an eight millimeter socket and remove that. And once they are both disconnected, we can fully remove our splash guard. Next, we can remove our lower skid plate that's behind our splash guard. It's held on by two 16 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna use a 16 millimeter socket to remove those. Once those are taken out, we can push up on our skid and fully remove that. 
Next, we can remove the two nuts on either side of each frame horn that are holding the bumper to the frame. I'm gonna be using an 18 millimeter deep socket in order to do that. Now we can repeat that for the other six studs. So while we're over on the passenger side, we also need to disconnect our fog light wiring harness. So just pull the clip out of the frame, press down and pull back. Now we can remove our bumper. So next we can remove our factory fog lights as well as the harness. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver to remove this trim piece that is protecting our fog light. It's just gonna be a couple of clips just like our upper splash guard. You can also use a trim removal tool for this. I find it a little bit easier with a flathead sometimes. So after all of those clips are removed, we can take off our trim piece. Hey guys, now that we're done watching our uninstall video, we're gonna get onto our bumper here, our stock one. We're gonna to have to remove our fog lights, some wiring harnesses, take some 13 millimeter bolts out, and then install them onto our new bumper. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is remove this harness right here just by unplugging it. We're gonna take our impact thumb with our seven millimeter and remove these four screws. Now I have those four screws out, we'll be able just to pull our, turn, our fog light out just like that. And you're gonna to wanna to just repeat the same procedure on the other side. Now that we got our fog lights out, we have eight 13 millimeters. I'm gonna take my gun and my 13 millimeters, start removing these nuts. That way we can pull this metal, uh, the metal bumper away from the plastic cover. So we're just gonna start over here. Once we have them off, we'll be able to pull our cover and split it apart. That way we can get to our wiring harness. So it was easier for me to lay the bumper flat and just lift up than it was to fight it on an angle. So we're gonna remove this piece Now that we have that piece out, we're gonna remove our hooks. I'm gonna to try to lay them down on the ground on the sides so I know when I put it back together which side was what. Now once we have them done, our harness runs behind the plastic. So to get to that, there is seven millimeter bolts here, some plastic clips still, and then once we get them out, we can pop our clips out, pull our harness out, 
and then we can put our bumper back together. So now we're going to remove our four upper plastic clips on our vehicle. There's four. There was supposed to be six, but we have two that are missing. So we're going to take these off. These are going to give us access to our eight millimeters. Now that we have that off, we're going to walk, work on removing the seven or eight millimeter bolts that are all the way around the, the whole bumper. Now I'm going to remove the eight millimeters that go all the way around the bumper. And then you have a couple down underneath the bumper here we're going to be taking off. So I'm going to just start over here. Some of ours are missing. I think I got all the ones up top. Now I'm just gonna lay the bumper down. Now, if you're going to put your bumper back together, I suggest using a quarter inch ratchet because this is plastic and you will break it or strip the, the bolts out. So now we're going to see if this comes apart. There are some studs here that we took the 13 millimeters off that had some clips on it, but I think it comes apart just like that without removing them. That's going to give us access to our harness now and now we'll start removing our harness. So now that we have these two apart we're going to remove these clips here to just hold in the wiring harness. As you can see somebody was off-roading with our Jeep so you're going to eat a lot of dirt when you start taking this stuff apart. It's always fun. So we'll get in here with my clip removal tool. Pop these clips out so we can get this harness out. And now that we have that, I'll be able to fish this harness up through. Got one more. Now we got our harness apart. Now, if you want to put your bumper back together without the harness, probably not a bad idea to put everything back the way it was. And we'll start our assembly on our new bumper now. So now we're going to install our fog lights from our old bumper into our new bumper. We're going to start with this bracket here that they supply in a kit. It's going to end up going in here like this. And we're going to use the small bolts with a lock washer and a flat washer. I'm going to put that on the Allen wrench here that comes in the kit. I'm going to start this one first. These holes are threaded in the metal, so... I'm going to get one started. And do the same for the other. Try not 
try not to drop it. They don't leave you a lot of room in here, but you just have to work until you feel it start. And once I get those two started, I'm gonna get my gun and get a Allen bit and run those two in. So now I have my quarter inch drive with my two and a half millimeter Allen head, and we're gonna tighten these up. Once we have those installed, I'm going to take our fog light and put it in place. I'm going to take the Allen head bolts that they give us in the kit with the flat washer and then the flat washer and lock washer. And stick that through, put this on the back side of it. Now if you got big hands, Gonna, you might struggle with getting these nuts on. They're a little bit tough. And you might be able to put the bolt through the other side instead of doing this. Might be even easier. We're gonna try it right now. It's just the Allen heads on the back side. So that might make it a little tougher to put your Allen head in there but it might work a little bit better. I'm gonna try that just now to see how that works. Which works better. Tighten. Now we'll do all the other three. It is a little tough to get back there, that's for sure. And we'll do the same over here with these two. And then the bottom one. Now I'm gonna go get a seven millimeter socket with my ratchet and we'll tighten these four up. Now I'm gonna see if I can put my finger back here and hold it. You might not need to put the Allen head back there. Yep, that works good. Same on this side. I'm just gonna hold the back of it. Sometimes you get lucky and you can do that. Now you're gonna just wanna repeat the same procedure on the opposite side. So now that we got our lights in, what we're gonna do, they give us these flat plates with these studs welded to them. We're gonna install them into our brackets. They give you these clear plastic pieces that are going to get slid over the bolt. And this is gonna hold these plates in place when we get it up into the vehicle. So now that we have those in, you're gonna to wanna to just plug your harness back in here. And then we're just gonna route it underneath here for now until we get it on the vehicle. And then once we get it on the vehicle, the finished touches, we'll take some wire ties, some cutters, 
and we'll tie everything up real nice and then we'll be able to plug it in. Now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna put the top bar on and you're just gonna to wanna to repeat this same procedure on the other side. Now we're gonna install our overrider hoop. We'll take our 13 millimeter bolts, washer behind and our locking nuts. I'm gonna get one started over here, get one started over here. Now that I got those two started, now I'll start the rest of them. And then, and then after we start the rest of them, we'll, we'll tighten them up without dropping them down into the bumper. I'll get all this side started, then we'll go over to the other side before we tighten any, because I wanna make sure it sits flat. So we'll Once I got them all started, just like that, we're gonna take our 13 millimeter wrench and our gun, and we're gonna start tightening them up. So I got my Ratching wrench. I'll tighten this one up with the ratcheting wrench. Now we'll go on to the other side. Same on this side. I'm going to use my ratcheting wrench for the inside one. Now that we have that one done. And take my impact gun. And now that we have those all tight, we're ready to install our bumper onto our Jeep. Now we're gonna install our bumper back on our Jeep. I'm gonna take it, sit it in place. Try to at least get one bolt to start on each side. And have them hold it up just like that with my leg. my flat washer and lock washer on. Come on to the other side over here. Same deal, flat washer, lock washer, and then nut. Get at least one started on both sides. Sure the other bolts through, which it is. And now we'll finish installing our bolts. So now we're going to start our 17 millimeters. I already got this bolt up in the place here. It's a 17 with a lock washer and a flat washer. And then I'm gonna also start my flat washer and nut down here. And I'm gonna go into the inside and put this one on the inside in here. 
just to get it started before I start running them in with a ratchet. I'm gonna take my 17 millimeter. Start running our bumper bolts in. Now we'll tighten up our inside bolts. Now you're gonna to wanna to repeat the same procedure on the other side. Now we'll plug in our fog lamps. And now's gonna be the time that you wanna get some wire ties, tie your harness up along here, get it all tight and neat so it's out of the way and it's not hanging down. Now we'll go on and install our D-rings. Now we'll install our D-rings. Just gonna take them apart and unscrew them, push them through the hole. Just tighten them up. Now you're gonna to wanna to repeat that same procedure on the other side, and then that'll wrap up this installation. That wraps up this review and install of our Barricade Tracker front bumper for 18 and newer Jeep Wrangler JLs. Thanks for watching, and for all things Jeep, keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.